is example I using the pen shop environment to forward all the entity based on based on the using a uh, forklift. Everybody okay? So we need to try this out today and see how you can make it to embed it into your migrate this concept into your homework assignment. <coughs> and we're going to start with uh, 6.2. Very. So this is the model we had the last time uh, using the pen. And we have a very straightforward the entity coming over to the workstation. The new parts go to the new pen station, and the old parts go to the regular <coughs> pen station, then pack and shipping. So now, today we're trying to do is I'm going to have a forklift transporting everything and see how this is going. <clears throat> I'm going to bring a vehicle in here. I'm going to call it forklift. Are you able to download this model? Okay. And we start with a 6.2. So go over to 6.3. <coughs> so you have the result already. But I just want to go over with you, see how I come to that. That makes sense? Okay. So the similar concept will be easily done because this homework, I simplify a little bit. You only have to transport stuff between what? Uh, the special installation to the two assembly station, correct? Right? So only four stations are involved. So we see similar to this concept. <clears throat> so the forklift I have right here, changing a symbol, actually pretty easy. I'm going to do a forklift, see if we have a forklift somewhere. Make it smaller. Everybody okay with me? See this forklift is a vehicle, and I can see the forklift. It has a specific design speed. In your homework, what is the speed we have? 180 feet per minute, correct? 100. So it's kind of fast. We, uh, the OSHA standard is the forklift cannot exceed 10 miles per hour. So I'm thinking about a. For now, miles per hour. I mean, make sense. We'll set up the speed for the <coughs> for the uh, forklift. Um, now we need to transport stuff using a forklift at the transfer node, uh, output node of every single workstation or server. We should have a so-called transport logic. Everybody see this? Transport logic. Now it's a false, meaning I don't need any transporter. In this case, I will say I will need a transporter and to make the transportation. And that transporter is a forklift, a vehicle I just defined. it. That's it. You're done with your homework. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Everybody okay? That's a simple version of how you do it. Of course, you need to have, in this example, I will have to specify for all the output no. Everybody okay with me? All the output no. So what I do is I just highlight all the output no I want 
to begin with and choose So every single output node, I specify I need this forklift to help me transport. Did that make sense at all? That's all there is to it. But in your homework, you will have m much complicated situation than this. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, you have all these wire coming back and forth. And also you probably noticed that there is only one way street between the what enter to the workstation, okay? If I have a forklift pick up the parts from the enter station and from the source and send it to what workstation, it will never be able to come back again because there is one way street. What do we do? One way to do this, you can what? Click on the path, change that to be bidirectional, correct? That's an easy way to do it. So, no trouble here. But this is only one vehicle you have in this example. What if you have two vehicles? What will happen? One will go in this direction, the other will go in two, the opposite direction, correct? Because in the beginning it's all incoming. So you will have your code coming back and forth between these lines to pick up and send it to the next workstation. And the trouble will become there is going to be a collision. We call that collision, correct? Or conflict. So probably easier way to do this, <coughs> or more safe way to do this, you probably already thought about that. We just create a path going the opposite direction, correct? We call it a loop. That makes sense? So far nothing too fancy, correct? Nothing too fancy. <coughs> and also, let's look at this. When the vehicle coming, send it stuff to the workstation, for example, in the beginning, this thing go back and forth, it's okay. That's all their incoming does. But what if somebody already finished with the workstation, go to the output node, ready to transfer to the next server, and the vehicle cannot jump? You see what I'm doing? What happened? This vehicle only restricted on this loop, cannot jump from this point to that point. Did that make sense? So we need to have some path for the vehicle to go around that workstation. So make it continuous loop. Okay, I'm going to do the same tricks for all these workstation. For the vehicles to be circle like that <coughs> and also when the vehicle reaches the shipping I'm gonna do it like that Did that make sense so create certain routable routable route for the forklift to go around and also the thing is once the vehicle reaches to the packing for example if now we have a new part to arrive, this vehicle has no route moving from this or this or this back into the entering portion. Everybody?
kind of okay with me? See my problem here? <clears throat> so let's do this. I'm going to restrict the vehicle only on the network. So if I run this, you will see the vehicle will got stuck, okay? Reach to the end and it will never come back. Did I, did I make sense? So we need to create a route for the vehicle to come back to the entering station. To do this, you have a various different way to do this. You can directly have a path going back to here. That makes sense? So I create a giant circle loop for you to run. Any questions so far? Are you able to reproduce this in your models? It's not taking too much time, huh? So on the homework, mm -hmm. are we basically going to just need a path to the You only involve four workstations, correct? Right? So, if you build a path from the end to the first node, mm -hmm. does it have to like bring every single unit to completion for every workstation before the forklift loops back around to get a new part? Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's my design for now. I'm just telling you one way to do things. You can determine how you want to do this. Basically, you can have what? Can you have something like this? Of course you can, correct? You understand what I'm trying to say? As long as you have the distance right, that's fine. But I'm showing you, I create a giant, what, circle for this things to work. This is my design for now. I'm, I'm just illustrating how it works. Uh, I don't imply how you should do your homework, correct? <clears throat> kind of makes sense so far? So that's that for the homework. You think that's going to be that easy? Nah. Nothing to do with this. It's forklift, correct? Forklift is forklift. Pallet is pallet. Two different things. And the pallet is between what? Post inspection to the uh, packing, correct? And forklift is between what? Special and installation station to the assembly one, assembly two. Am I right? Uh, you could, you could. I, I'm, I'm gonna come to that in a second. Is this a concept is so far okay? Building a, a routable network, whatever, whichever you prefer. Okay, I don't want to <coughs> limit your mindset, but this is the way I demonstrated, but not necessary. this is the solution, correct? Understand what I'm trying to say? I don't want you to say, hey, this is how Dr. Wu did it. And you can f figure out the creative way to do this, same thing. <clears throat> now, in your homework, how many forklifts we have? Three homework, uh, three uh, forklifts. So we basically can have a forklift down here, you see the population. Everybody see this? And typing three. Sorry. Is that okay? Three, four cliff. And also, you can define the behavior of this four cliff. Four cliff, okay. The behavior of the four cliff is, is the four cliff has a so-called 
sorry. Bring this bigger enough so you can see that. You see that initial, oh, uh, where is that? Here, the home station for the forklift. Okay, where is the home station for the forklift? And for example, right now I'm going to make it this guy as forklift. So in that case, I might have to get a more efficient path from the home, go all the way to here. So we we'll make a circle. This home node, which is the output node of workstation, is my home. The output node of workstation is my home. And also, you can de determine the behavior of this forklift. If it's idle, if nobody using the forklift, what do we do? Park at no by default. Park where is that? Okay. You can also determine, okay, if it's idle, park at home. It will route itself back to the snow. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes. No. Don't care. I'll put, sorry, my eye is having issues, so I'll put for the workstation, correct? So the behavior is a little bit changing a little bit. I'm going to start running this. You can see. <coughs> and probably I should set this a little bit long, so maybe 200. Two hundred yard, so you see the forklift is actually running around. Everybody okay with me so far? Question for me. Also, your forklift can have a carrying capacity, not the capacity itself. Each time, a forklift can carry how many entity with them. So you can specify that as well. Go into the forklift and choosing what? Initial carrying capacity, we call that, for example, three. We're going to slow it down a little bit so you can see how it works. Make it faster. And let's do that a little bit. Do it like 18, and each arrival I have five arrival. Make this longer. Sorry. I'm bad. <coughs> Can you see they're taking more than one entity on the forklift now? Maybe make it a little bit over that direction. You can see that. That makes sense? The whole tricks, how you do everything. 
as the batch number is five. Like your homework, you have 15 and 10, correct? Like the number on the pallet? No, the number per arrival, correct? Oh. Did I? Yeah. Entity per arrival, that's on the source. So each time arrival, we have five. I, I'm just illustrating, not necessary. I hypothetically set it up. So you make sure you can see they carry multiple item at the time. Did that make sense at all? Question for me. If not, I'm going to illustrate one more thing. Ready to learn the new trick? Okay. Let's do that. Stop this. In your homework, what do you have? You have, uh, for example, backup server, correct? Right? Remember this? Remember this? And then you have that going. Um, what do you do to have an overflow going to the backup? Still remember how to do that? You set up a transfer in constraint, correct? What is that? And where is that? Click on this, go down here, saying what? Advanced option, I'm going to do transfer in constraint. Instead of by default, we do it by customer condition. Remember this? And what was the customer condition? You just what? Pen station, correct? The input buffer. Uh, what content and number of waiting less than for example five I'm gonna let this guy in otherwise I'm going to let it go to the backup still remember this is what we did homework one not too difficult just repeat what we did before I'm sure some of you just copied it from my video so you don't remember anymore. <laughs> it's a good time for you to <laughs> kind of review that yourself. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to let it run. problem. What is this problem? This problem means what? Call Dr. Wu. Correct? <laughs> I knew this is coming, so I added plenty of you to my Facebook before the homework is due. As now I'm going to harass you, stalk you, and <laughs> any mean. I have more better life to do than <laughs> stalking you guys. In case you want to call me on when I'm not around here. Is that okay? <laughs> That's only purpose. And I, I know in, in case of, we call it in case of an emergency, correct? Put this block. And <laughs> <laughs> There's the arrow showing up. Basically means that we change the transfer in condition so that the vehicle trying to get into the workstation now. By default, all the workstations don't allow vehicle, like a transporter, go into your workstation. Only the entity can come in. Does that make sense? Since we change that to be a customized, we whatever we want, 
So it's up to you how you're going to transfer it. So CMIL basically pass on that <laughs> condition to your customized. So we need to add an additional, what, additional constraint to what prevent the vehicle run into that server because it trashed the server. That's what this complaint is. So over here, I'm going to do another condition call. Oh, let's do this first. Go to home. Here is, is a forklift or not. Put it. Oh, sorry. Put a negative sign in the from. I say, if it's not a forklift, everybody okay with me? If it's not a forklift, and if it's the current input buffer have less than one, so this what we. What I'm going to write it on here. So you kind of understand what it is, okay? I call this particular vehicle forklift. If you call it vehicle one, vehicle two, you have to change that name. Understand what I'm trying to say? Forklift is the one I just said. So here means is a forklift, for example, is true or false, okay? Is an entity or something else? I say is a forklift. And I put it Asker sign before that means what? If it's not a vehicle, then you can come in. Make sense? If it's not a forklift, then you can come in. So we need to add this condition so that for at least for the assembly two workstation, you will have something. Question for me. Question? No question? Don't care? Okay. That's fine. So now we should have So you see that the forklift now passing through Penn Station as it's supposed to be, the entity leaf go inside the Penn Station and the vehicle actually go around. Does that make sense? It got rejected to go around that direction. Question so far? I'll probably talk too much. And then, <coughs> what do I need to do? We have a short class today. The next thing I'm trying to do is for this same thing. For well, this is this this same thing. I'm trying to <coughs> figure out one of the question uh, homework question is talking about should I have one. Special station or two special stations, okay? How do you guys did that last time? We're talking about the pre, uh, pre-assembly inspection, we we'll call it incoming inspection. Remember last time we did it? So what do you did last time? You changed the capacity, correct? And you run it again, and you dig through all this big, output format and figure out what is the what are the differences remember what he did but this I want you to understand actually the simulation they are all based on the arrival patterns the processing pattern and uh, the the so-called uh, value array patterns are based on random number correct you'll probably understand 
the first time you run it and the second time you run it may not be exactly getting the same number. Are you getting the same number every time? You don't even know. You didn't even pay attention. <laughs> All right. Whatever number, I just wrote it on a report. Call it good. <laughs> Actually, by design, CMIL have the same random number string every time you run it by default. So if you have a same model, you don't change a whole lot. The next time you run it, you should get exactly the same result. Okay? We'll talk about why later on. Okay? But you can make it try different render number. What you do is in the run menu, advanced option, you can change renderness and you can choose which render number you want. Everybody okay? So if I change number seven to number seven, by default is one, and you run it again, the result will be different from the first render number you. So you can manually choose which render number. Did I? By understanding this, you can start with a different render number we call a C to begin with, and using a different string of a render number, and producing a various result. Exactly, exactly. Does that make sense? But for those who take, took uh, engineering statistics too, you'll learn about what we can never trust a sample, random <coughs> sample process by one single sample, correct? And your simulation running one time is one single sample. Does that make sense? So, we should run it multiple times using different random number string and trying to get a statistical estimate of how your output's gonna be. So today we're gonna show you how to do this and how to compare so-called two different settings. For example, in the first homework you did what? Is a one income inspection is enough or two, correct? How much you can improve. Can we do this automatically? Yes, we can. <clears throat> so, what I do for now, I'm just going to hypothetically choose the pen station because uh, more parts coming through here. By default, the initial capacity is one. Everybody see this? Default initial capacity is one. So I want to try one, two, three, four, see which one give me the best result. Just like you did it in homework one, correct? Right? How many incoming inspections we have. Instead of doing that, I'm going to the definition, setting a new property called painting capacity. Everybody okay? Paint capacity. I'm creating a property instead of a state variable. I can do a state variable, but now I'm illustrate how to using the property variables, <coughs> property variable, set up an integer property and call it pen station capacity. And by default, it is one. Everybody see this? By default is one. Once I set it up, I go back to the pen station. Over here, the capacity, we say, pen capacity. Easy? Not too difficult. Very similar process like you define in state variable, but instead you create a property variable. Everybody okay? 
And the property variable, what is the property variable? These property variables don't change value throughout the simulation. They're fixed. You can set them before the simulation. Once the simulation starts, it will never change. Understand what I'm trying to say? It will never change. <clears throat> I demonstrate why we're doing that in a second. And also, I want you to see, if you click on the empty portion of your model, click on any empty space, go to the model portion, look at that. There's a control called what? Pan capacity. And you can change that on the fly. If I want to change <coughs> to two and run it again, that's fine. I change to three, run it again, that's fine. <coughs> but that's not the purpose I'm setting up this property. I want to do this automatically. Understand what I'm trying to say? And each time I run with the 10 different random string. So I can compare a statistical result. Everybody see what I'm doing so far? <clears throat> so I'm going to put it to one back here. So I can run this. It's still going to work. Because it's just like you set a stay variable, and I put that stay variable on there. Instead, that's a property I'm using. <clears throat> now, the trick starts. The biggest usage for the property is the so-called model parameter. What is the model parameter means? I want to set it is a decision variable for me to optimize my system. I want to see which capacity I set it to the pen give me the best result. Everybody okay with you? All right, so I'm going to go to the project and click on new experiment. The new experiments in the simulation sense, now the simulation model is made. Okay? complete, we test it run, it runs fine. Now I'm trying to run for multiple definition. Everybody okay with me so far? <clears throat> or you can right click on the model, right click on the model and specify new experiment as well. Either you can using the buttons on the project home or right click on the model, create a new experiment. Let's take a look at this new experiment. What happened? Scenario one, everybody see this? I'm gonna run it by default 10 times. By 10 times. Everybody see this? And using the control with a pan capacity equals to one. Everybody okay? Can I do this following? We're going to set a scenario to. Set it to two. Scenario three. I'm going to set it to three. Did that make sense? I can continue like a several combination. Make sense? Make sense? Yes? No? All right. <clears throat> then I can run the simulation, correct? I can run the simulation. I click on reset and run. It takes no time to finish them. 10 replication for each one of them. Everybody see this? Okay. Then I can go to the result, which is the pivot grid result, like we had in the model. We can see these are the output, and this is for scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. All the results. Uh, let me shrink this a little bit so you can see a little bit better view of the result. For each one of the results you have in the model section, the result page, you have an average, minima, Maxima and uh, what is the half width? 
What is the half width? Remember what is the half width from STAT 2? Heard about a thing called 95% confidence interval? That makes sense? What is that? Still remember? Your confidence interval, yeah, it should be equals to what? X bar, which is what? Oh, sorry. It should be X hat, which is the estimated mean, correct? Which is the average of your sample, plus or minus what? A T statistic, remember? Everybody okay? Based on what? 95% or 90% then using, what is the degree of freedom? M minus one, still remember these things? M times what? Come on, come on, you know this. This is remember how to look it up in the book. Estimated, what? What? Uh-huh, divided by square root of. Remember this? I mean, I don't expect you to remember, but you've seen this before, correct? You've seen this before, correct? So what is this part? It's not something you are familiar with. That's the halfway, plus or minus. Make sense? They report it over here and give you the comparison in one single table. You can copy and paste, you can actually export this into Excel, and so on and so forth. Question for me. Not too difficult, correct? Right? Click on new experiment, set up a couple different combination of the system control. We're going to add more control into this, okay? Question, question. All right, if it's not question, question we're going to. Is the required replications just how many times the simulation runs with the different seed for that scenario? Yes. You can change to 150, 30, okay? But by default, this is 10 <coughs> and 95% of confidence into it. Now we add another thing. Let's make a trick how to do that. What is the best combination for model ATV and model BTV? We call the product mix. In production decision, you have same amount of time for a week, correct? work time. And then how much time you devoted into model A, how many time you devoted to model B, that's the decision, okay? Production manager has to make. So which one I have more demand, which one was have more profit, so let's do this. I'm going to set up a couple things back in the model, define another property called Let's do a real model called product mix. It's just a number, correct? Based on this, we originally has a 70% of old product, 30% the new product. And as the problem stated initially, so it's a 70-30 is my product mix. So here by default I'm going to using 0.7. How's that? Everybody okay? 0.7 is my default. I'm going to change that product mix portion right here. Remember this? I'm going to have in the data here is a 70-30 can I change this to 
Oh, I can just ignore that. We can do this easily. <clears throat> Do, let's do a stay assignment. Much easier. Before exiting, what I'm going to do, adding a what? Stay variable call model entity, part of type, for example. Oh, let's do this. Adding a part of type, that's easy. model type you guys know this adding a model type model entity stay variable go back to the model and here we can assign this call model entity model type equals to what random Discrete with one based on what? Product mix. Two, one minus product. Wait a second, did I do something? Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. One more. Invalid syntax. Why? Oh, sorry. It is right. Just do 1.0. We'll be fine. Is that okay? Because accumulated. So what do I do is whatever product mix percent it is, for example, now by default is 0.7, correct? So 70% product one and 1.0, meaning the rest of a 30%. What's the, do you need a, what's the 20? Oh, should be a comma, correct? two and like that 100 percent so shoot works now everybody okay with me so in this case I can actually what changing that if you look at right now I have two controls in my model I can change that from 0 0.7 2.6 right or 2.5 Point three, point whatever I want. Make sense at all? So here I'm going to do default still making point 0.7. However, now I can create a new experiment. Number two, I have point 0.6. Experiment number three, I have 0.5. How's that? Now I can have what? Combination of two different system controls. Make sense? Any combination of those. As we want to find out which one, which combination is the best combination using simulation. I can have. 200. Later on, I'm going to show you. Actually, Simio come with a software called OptiQuest. It will automatically generate the combination and find out the best solution for you. Now, make sense? So that's how powerful this is going to be. But right now, we just learn the basic step for your homework, okay? And you can determine. But here's the compliance. Say, hey, Doctor Wu. We have three scenario. We have a huge list of output, right? Right? And to dig through, it is very tedious still. 
if I only want to what? If I only want to focus on certain aspect of it, we call that objective function. You learned that linear programming, correct? I only want to focus on maximize the profit. How's that? Okay, maximize the profit. So how do I do that? <coughs> First, I go back to the model slightly to replicate what you did in homework one. Defining what? <coughs> two variable integer, remember? Two integer variable, what they are? Model A, produce, correct? This is gonna be model B, produce. Make sense? You got this, correct? Homework one, you've done this. And then, every time in the output, in the shipping, what, what do I do? Do a, do I have a stay assignment? We could. Uh, let's do this the other way. Using the add-on process, on entering, what do I do? Adding a sign block, correct? From now on, I prefer you using the add-on process because it's more flexible. The state assignment is for the baby, for the amateur, correct? Now you should be able to handle this pretty well. What do we do? So here what we do is model A produce equals to Model A produce plus what? Entity is what? O product. O entity, correct? Everybody okay? Add another one. Nah, don't need another one. Just make it copy of that model B equals to model B at eh, let's do this should be a <coughs> new entity right entity new sorry Know this trick? Why is that? This part re returns zero or one, correct? If it's a new entity, we call it model B, for example, this will return one. Then model B produce got increment. Everybody okay? If it's model A, the model A produce will be increment instead of model B. So I'm using Basically the same without using any of the if then else and then we can finish this really easy. Actually you can combine these two assign into one <coughs> just by adding into down here. See it what I'm doing? Okay, so but I have a two steps so you can see that how I did everything. <coughs> Question so far. Once you set this in the output, uh, in, in the uh, sync, what I need to do? I need to set up an output statistic. Click on element, output statistic. Get two of them. Model B, two output statistics to record and export the value of that. <coughs> so 
So for the model X should be tied into model A produced. This one should be tied into model B produced. The output statistic will generate output and the result page. Let me run this real quick. So show you where they are. It's done. Look at the result page. You see on the top. Model A finish, model B finish, everybody see that? And they give you a number. If you just define a state variable, A will not show up in the final re report. So you set the output statistic, it will show the final value of those two state variables. We're going to use this in my experiment. Stop this, come back to the experiment I just set up. Okay. Experiment I just set up. <coughs> Adding a response. And this response we call the profit. How's that? And the profit will be in currency. And the expression will be, take a look, model A, finish, <coughs> the value, times 400, which is each one of the units you finish, you have a profit of 400. Everybody see this? Plus, model B, Finish times 150. What does that mean? The end of the simulation, whichever model A I finish, everybody okay? Times unit profit. Everybody see this? Model B TV finish times the unit profit. Yes? Oh. Okay. So now I can kind of run this real quick. Takes no time to done this. What do you see? These are the average number for that particular objectives, correct? And actually over here I can specify these output should I minimize or maximize? All right? Yes? All right. And then, over this, after you run it, actually you can click on the response result. You see a 95% gain chart comparing these three. So now you can determine are they statistically different or are they statistically indifferent? We'll talk about more experimental design next lecture period. But here is how you do it. We'll repeat this one more time, okay? For the next class period. Question for now. Set up experiment, set up control using property variable in your model, and set up different scenario and set up a so-called response, which is we call the objectives, okay? And also, the CML can later on determine optimizing your model for you based on multiple objectives. Did you guys learn multiple objectives in OR2 at all? No? We, we don't teach that anymore? So here we can have a multiple objectives function and compromise between among the several objective functions we have. 
this is more and more like a what? Optimization problem, linear programming, nonlinear programming. However, it is not directly set up a mathematic model. Instead, they're using the simulation model. And you can set up a certain control variable how you optimize your system. That make sense? All right, conclude today's lecture.